Yes, the 20th Avenue podcast with your favorite podcast at Dumisani Nguva. Yeah, I'm holding it down with the goddess Mrs. Hip Hop. It's a classified podcast episode with none other than Sasa Class. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Thank Bam. you for having me, as yeah. usual. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, it's been a long time, man. Where have you been hiding? I only see you on uh, social media throwing jabs at people. Yeah. Am I throwing jabs or are they throwing jabs and I'm just defending myself? You're just defending yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let's just start with a little bit of foundation reminding uh, one or two people who Sasa class is before we get into the deep stuff. That's the interesting one. Yeah. So who's, who's Sasa? Saruna Kimal. Do I still need to answer that question? Yeah. <laughs> For the white two keys. Um. Oh, oh, they definitely know. Um. Who is Sasa? In terms of what? I mean, I can describe myself as so many things, but I guess it's a a thing of perception. I'm an artist. I'm a rapper. I'm a child of God. I am a actress, a presenter, yeah. and I'm a bad bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh. So. Talking about the current state of hip hop, you are one person who has taken that craft so seriously. What can you say about the current state of hip hop? Because a lot of critics are saying that the game has gone down compared to where it was a few years ago. Um, I feel like people that say like it's gone down sound like bitter, like old heads. I feel like um, hip hop is at its hype right now. It is um, what's controlling the culture in the world. Um, literally every race is either gaining from hip hop culture in terms of the way that they dress, in terms of the music that they listen to, in terms of what um, influences their lifestyle. So I feel like hip hop is really at its peak in terms of influence. Um, in terms of lyricism, man, we started off with a hip hop, hippie, the hippie to the hip hop hippie. So who are we to really judge these um, my 2000? Yeah. yeah. All right. So the, the, the hip hop heads are, are saying that they, they, they open the door for for your generation up to the latest current generation. And they're saying that you guys are not holding it down properly. You're not taking the, the craft professionally. Unlike how our foreign counterparts are doing, talking about South Africa and the likes. Um, as a person that was also working in South Africa in the music industry that side, the entertainment industry on, in South Africa, it's all the same, trust me. It's just the market. It's just <laughs> like, the market. It's just the market. Everybody's the same. If you see the... Um, the obviously, if you have a, a much larger audience listening to you, um, you're going to have more influence. It's yeah, like, who's yeah. talking about your music more? Obviously, you're going to have much more influence, but... It's pretty much all the same. Like we make really good music. I'm so proud of the music that people are making in Botswana, especially in terms of not only melodies, but like lyricism. I'm very, very happy with the state of our musicality in Botswana. I just wish we had a much larger audience. Yeah. So I see you saying that we, we're doing all well in Botswana, but we have a case whereby like, it's one in a, in, a, in a million, like, none of our local musicians, rappers are, are making money out of selling their music, especially online. Is it something, is there like a syndrome which is stopping people from selling music online? I know there's COVID and everything, but they should be like cashing in like from, from something at the moment. Um, like I said, it's the same everywhere, just depending on the market, because you have a lot of rappers all around the world. Um, if I told you Nigerian artists are making more money than American artists, would you believe me? No, you wouldn't, because what American artists do is look like they have money and place themselves in situations where they look like they have money, but it's not necessarily what they actually have. But um, in terms of Botswana, like I said, because we have a, a small market and we're not that exposed to um, as many people, that's why the situation is how it is. But I feel like we work 10 times harder than a lot of people have to because we're our own managers, we're our own videographers these days. We mix and master our own music. Uh, we have to advertise ourselves, have to go and sit in meetings ourselves. We're doing a lot for people 
that um, should be focusing on music. Hmm? All right, so you're saying that like um, local artists are, are working hard like 10 times harder than, than everyone else. So Not than everyone else, but mm -hmm. are definitely working hard. All right, but wh uh, wh why is it that like my, my main interest is, is in finding out like um, what's, what's so difficult about selling the music online because we're not necessarily selling music to Botswana only. We're selling to some Botswana out of the country and like international music consumers. I think because um, in technical terms, yes, you would say um, that would probably make us more money. But um, still, imagine you have set up a beautiful store and it has everything that people want. And um, it's in the middle of nowhere. Like it's in Kalahari, in the desert. Like, I agree, like we need to get more music online. But I just believe with no exposure, that's not going to make a difference because you are literally just um a paradise in the middle of nowhere that nobody can get to all right all right all right all right um so talking of the latest uh, current issue actually the COVID 19 which has affected the, the the entertainment industry left right and center how are you managing to to keep up as an artist like what's your source of income at the moment um you know i always find it so weird when people ask these artists like questions because you know um, the country as a whole in Botswana is yeah. actually about to hit a serious financial crisis and that's with every industry. Um, people feel very comfortable with asking artists like what's your income, what's happening with you? But um, I don't mind answering that question. The thing is in any industry, if you're smart, you'll make money. Um, it's about how you work and for now, just before we hit this second lockdown or of alcohol of events and so on. Yeah. We had our small little events. Um, I'm talking personally, I'm not talking for any other artist. And um, I've been doing some brand work, some influencing work on social media. Yeah. And that is my current source of income. Yeah, uh, congratulations by the way. So you know the new ambassador of what? Beef Eater. Beef Eater. It's a gene, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm how did you get that deal? They contacted me and saw me as the right person fit to influence their work in Botswana. Um, it's a brand that wasn't so popular before yeah. in this country, but um, I've heard of the brand in South Africa. Um, when I traveled to China, it was there as well. So I just, I guess they saw me fit to familiarize people in Botswana with the brand. All right, so which means you have some, some store catch or creep, like you have something, <laughs> you're drinking. The, the president said we shouldn't be drinking right now, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So moving forward, um, that would you already pick in. Mm hmm. Mm. Is that what the the streets are saying? Ah, uh, from there's a little bit which you spotted my ear. Okay. You know, so is it going? How's, How's what going? How's the relationship going? Which relationship? With Bexen. You said Khate and I didn't say yes. You so didn't you're say just yes. making assumptions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Assumptions are being made, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alright, no, on, on, on a more serious note. Um lately we've been having a lot of GPV related cases. And you're the you're the queen of hip hop, Mrs. Hip Hop. Um, what do you think is missing in our in our society which leads to a lot of men harming their women, harming their sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, there's only so much that legislation and laws can do and the government, but we as a society need to change our um, mindset, our consciousness, um, and be more of aware of our behavior because um, GBV is not something that is just like a thing where you're like GBV is in, hiding in the woods and GBV is about to come out from under your bed like a tokolosi. No, GBV is um, it's a result of people people's insecurities, yeah. um, people's mental health issues, and specifically, I will talk about men, even though we do have cases of women. Um, committing GBV, but um, I would specifically speak to the men that have not dealt with past issues and that comes out in anger against people that they feel are inferior to them. So when you, like, you know, when you see an ant basically, and 
even us as humans, like we decide to step on an ant because what the ant wasn't doing anything to you. It's just there. It's just walking around. But your own anger with like another human life that you can feel you can overpower will give you a sense of a sense of like powerfulness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah it will yeah. give you a sense of um, of strength to put somebody that you feel is weaker than you down. Uh -huh. So I feel like us as a community need to deal with. Um, our mental health. So, in, in other words, I, I understand you saying that there's, there, there isn't much that the, 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 the law enforcers, the legislators and everything like... There absolutely is because um, the thing is we're dealing with after the fact. After the fact. We are not preventing these things from happening. Yeah. Um, we're not talking about what is going on in like the home situation, um, how people are dealing with divorce maybe, their fathers leaving, watching their mothers beating, um, their fathers beating up their mothers. Um, bullying at school like we're not a community that deals with like psychology and therapy like those things are almost a taboo in our communities so we're not speaking in the actual like on the actual issues the deep-rooted issues that are causing people to cause harm on other people yeah yeah so do you think like the, 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 there's need for, for for dialogues to be held within homesteads within families when a young man is growing up and be told like no this is how you're supposed to approach a woman this is also how you're supposed to treat a situation when you're faced with such an encounter absolutely you know um i feel the younger generation has a lot more information going out and they are really having the dialogue so i'm proud of the the generation behind me for being able to be fighters and have these conversations but I think it's also most important for the people that are raising these strong kids to make them understand that um, it's not their fault to have thoughts and um, moments of anger and um, they're not to blame but yes we definitely need to have those dialogues especially in schools while the kids are still young before they even think of committing the act so yeah okay so uh, in other words are we are we, are we a, a depressed generation are we depressed we are a depressed nation i wouldn't say a depressed generation um we can only learn behavior from our previous generation so i would put this on all of us as a country and i know Botswana is almost what is it like top 10 of like most unhappy countries that says a lot all the kind of conversation that we have it's constantly negativity putting ourselves down oh these are the problems in our society instead of like having conversations of encouragement all right so the reason why i was raising this gpv related question is because uh, a few weeks ago you had a, a social media exchange with uh, with uh, with a uh, a journalist Daniel Kinosi, he mentioned that you were involved in a certain, uh, if I can put it, a sexual act. Yeah. So in, in response, people were not happy and like he was even trending and stuff like that. So along those conversations, a friend and a media practitioner do the party mentioned that like uh, there's a, the, 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 the conversation... There's a lot of rape connotation to what yeah, you were saying. Rape connotation and rape culture and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's just pretend what he was saying was true. Um, what I do decide to do with my body, whether it's with a million people or whether it's with one, has nothing to do with you. It is my consent on who I allow, allow into my body, first of all. And second of all, none of what he said was remotely true. And the unfortunate thing about Dan Genosi is a lot of the things that he says, which I feel is extremely dangerous, um, he lies a lot. And he has admitted to me about lying about a lot of things that he has said. And um, that for me is extremely dangerous, especially because of his opinion and his platform. Because what kind of information are you distributing and making your followers feel comfortable talking about, especially men? So what he said wasn't necessarily GBV. It's not like he attacked me physically. You know, they were just words. But it does um, encourage GBV through not respecting women's um, consent, respecting women's decisions to 
to live their life. So, yeah. All right, all right. We'll see it. We'll see it. So, like this, this rapey culture, it seems like something which is which is common amongst us men. And how how do we like take it out of us? How do we take it out of us? Because I've had conversations with like I've not not I haven't heard, but I've I've heard people saying, ah, uh, maybe she was raped because she was wearing something which was revealing. I am so I actually don't even want to go into that conversation. It's so annoying. Men know that it is wrong. Um, to keep on continuing to be like stop that what you're doing you know it's wrong it has nothing to do men who rape and when who, men who physically harass women know what they're doing is wrong they absolutely do it's the empathy and the 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 care to not do it um, I personally as a woman feel like I don't want to address men anymore you know what you're doing is is wrong you yeah, need to yeah. fix yourselves mentally you know that there's something unstable about you go and fix yourself to fix the reason why you feel you need validation from overpowering a woman to make you feel like a man um, that for you is for you to deal with you are an absolute pathetic and excuse of a man if you feel like you need to validate yourself by making somebody feel inferior right 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 um as a woman a hip hop queen like um you're good looking you sex and everything <laughs> thank you have you had like personal like experiences where by maybe you're walking on stage like someone tries to jump on you force themselves on you or even when you're walking on the street people are like oh this is a class uh. i feel like this i'm um my story isn't special um mm. whether i'm beautiful or whether i'm sexy or whether i'm an artist a lot of women will tell you that they have dealt with uh, sexual harassment or molestation or anything remotely close so I obviously have dealt with it and any woman would tell you that she has been a victim of such all right all right no this is this is a too sensitive subject yeah it, it really is it really is yeah yeah and um, I'm hoping I'll, I'll take responsibility also in, in teaching my young ones on, on these issues and stuff like that and I hope like relevant authorities and elders within the community do the same yeah i feel like now um even as a woman i'm tired of discussing it men need to deal with their gender and need to um talk until we will still keep on grouping you guys together and say all of you are like this because oh. all of as a unit i don't care who you are whether you are my grandfather you're my father or whoever as long as you're not making it your main mission to change the perspective of the next man we group you all together all yeah. men yeah. yeah okay okay all right so talking about uh, your interactions on social media like uh, there are times whereby you, you you get to be the subject whereby people attack you because of who you are because of maybe what they've had and stuff like that yeah um i'll give an example um, you once spoke of like um, encouraging your, your fellow peers artists to, to work hard despite the, the, the pandemic and um, someone responded saying that you're speaking out of privilege because your mom is a legislator, she's a minister and you came out saying that I was such a class before my mom became a minister. How do you handle this like all these jabs and stuff like that? I feel um, like you're, for you're one, a strong I feel like I I don't care. The main reason I put it on social media is to teach the next person that might be watching because in my personal life, I promise you, once I put my phone down, I am where I am and I'm living my life. But for people that speak and say that I speak from a point of privilege, they don't know anything about my life. Um, and my mom has always taught me to be an independent, um, outspoken woman as she is. So whenever I speak, it's from a point of uplifting and never from a point of look i'm better than you i did this so yeah. all right all right but how is it like uh, the heat like uh, did you take it personal in the heart like that no I'm, I'm going to mess up with this person like they don't know who i am i'm so class like uh, i'm from the streets 
Um, <laughs> I'm not from the streets, first of all. But no, it's not personal. Like I say, um, I represent a lot of women that are constantly being put down, especially in an industry where I wasn't even welcomed in the first place. It took a lot for me to earn my stripes um, in my circle and then in my industry. So I'm still continuing to fight. Every day I have to validate my thoughts or my intelligence because people look at me and assume that I don't have anything to say or any opinion. So I'm constantly fighting for women that feel like that, which is the reason why I can't be silent about certain issues. I feel like it's very ignorant to choose not to teach people to be better. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, so this morning before I left my house, I was, I was reading, um, I was going through like different papers and I read that there's a, a Motswana chick, she's not based in Botswana, she's based in South Africa. She went out with her sugar date, her blesser. They traveled to an island and the old man, like after everything they had done and did, he just disappeared and left the chick stranded. Oof. Yeah stranded at the island and stuff like that but what's your take about this lifestyle is it a lifestyle it's a profession of young girls like dating i feel like it's a decision that individuals make everybody in the scenario is a complete moron because um one had the man promised to give this woman anything then he is a complete douchebag for leaving her stranded um i feel like that is wrong and as for the woman thinking that a man is going to consider her feelings having promised only money you're also dumb so everybody in this scenario everybody in the scenario is dumb if i were to encourage any woman please i'm not saying these men deserve zero <laughs> men deserve zero they must pay but um have the, the ability to pay for yourself in case shit hits the fan that's what i'm gonna say like they need to men if they're going to constantly live off the patriarchy then if you're in that position of power then you need to be prepared to spend money but girls they don't give a fuck <laughs> these figures don't give a fuck work hard make your own money for just in case all right so have you, have you been approached by these old tycoons like these chavroni flamboyant um, big guys I get approached by like all sorts of people. So, yeah, and uh, yeah, I don't know who's big or who's not. It's just let's say if one of these tycoons approaches you and like, yeah, you know what, baby girl, let's go to Madagascar for the weekend. Drop everything that you're doing. I mean, it's the same as meeting like a random boy at university, and he's like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Would you like to go and ride quad bikes with me? For me, it's not really about like the person's financial position. It's just like, do I like you? Whether you are you have a billion bula or whether you have 10 bula it's how you approach me so if i decide to leave the country with a multi-millionaire who respects me that's my decision i'll be very happy to do that but people men are assholes whether they're broke or they're not so it's the same they'll cheat on you whether they're broke or not so it's the same right right okay let's let's get back to the to the music business yeah to the music business um can I ask you an uncomfortable question? Nothing Do you own your masters? Absolutely. You own your masters? Yes. Um, but a lot of your peers don't even know what a master is. They don't know who owns their masters. They don't get royalties at the end of the day. And yeah. Stuff like that. Why is it that there's this thing going on, especially on the young generation? Um, actually, I feel like the younger generation is becoming more aware. Um, a lot of people now opt to be independent because of the dissemination of information because of the internet so they don't need to sign to a huge record deal they just need to make themselves visible so i'm very proud of this new generation like i keep saying but um i guess you know with passion like you're not because you're not like a business person like you're not not everybody's an entrepreneur which you need to be in order to focus on business in music so you want to focus on your music, you want to focus on being in the studio, making... So I wouldn't say somebody's ignorant, but we do need to learn more about the business of music. But you're not ignorant for focusing, for wanting to focus on your passion. Alright. But, um, like, like I was saying, some people just go to these uh, random bedroom studios. 
they have producer X produce the song for them. Just give them a CD. Producer X goes to submit that to the collecting society as he is the owner of the content. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of producers are actually doing this without telling these young kids like, dude, I'm the one who's benefiting. I'm just putting you on. I'm making as if I'm putting you on, but I'm just using you. Absolutely. Like I said, people, we need to be more versed in, you know, the music business. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that blame on, on the victim of somebody actually taking their music. So, yes, we need to be more aware, aware of people stealing our music. But um, at the same time, you say bedroom studios. <laughs> Lil Wayne records in his hotel room sometimes about the quality that comes out and um you know what like in any industry survival of the fittest get information focus on your passion focus on your craft get well versed in what you're doing and move from there speaking of bedroom studios they've, they've ended a lot of young female musicians careers some fall pregnant along the way before they can even finish recording their mixtape or, or album or anything have you not been a victim of work by producer? Like, let me put you on, you know, just open the thighs into the mamu. A victim of pregnancy. <laughs> not a victim of pregnancy. <laughs> but well, uh, Cardi B had an amazing career, and just when she blew up, she got pregnant, and she managed to um, take over the world. But um, as for being a victim, like I said, it has nothing to do with the women that have been victims of being told to open their legs. It is more so on the person that's taking advantage of a person that needs help and asks them to open their legs. But yes, I have been a victim of that. And obviously, because I'm that bitch, I say, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's talk about South Africa. Yeah. I think it was two or three years ago, you just left the country. Boom, you're on DSTV presenting a show with the legend, Fat Joe. Absolutely. Yes. How did you get that gig, bro? Um, I actually met Fat Joe through my manager at the time. I won't say his name, but um, they were friends. Fat Joe, he invited Fat Joe to Botswana and um, Fat Joe happened to meet me. He liked me. I was being my usual stupid self. We were laughing a lot about stupid things and he asked me what I did. And I was like, oh, by the way, I'm going to go do a show in South Africa in Rustenburg, which was the DSTV um, show at the time and he got interested initially i was supposed to be a dj on his show i lied to him and i said i could i could dj <laughs> i lied to him and i feel like i lied to everybody else i'm like of course i'm a dj but like me i take the opportunity when it presents itself and when we were on set and it was too late i'd be like i can do so much more than dj i can actually present let me be your co-presenter so that's how it happened so was the experience of like working on such a a big stage, DSTV, you've been watched by everyone, Africa, the world. It was really awesome. Honestly, like, I learned how to do a lot more things there. It also, I wasn't, I'm not intimidated anymore because um, I guess as Botswana, we seem to feel like what we're doing is less than anybody else in any other country, but it's pretty much the same. It's just about being relentless and um, going after what you want. Um, when I tell you all sorts of people, actors are dealing with the same things, journalists are doing, dealing with the same things, artists are dealing with... The whole thing is the same. It's just your income and your output that's yeah. different. Yeah. Period. So which opportunities came along the way when you're in South Africa? I'm sure you're meeting with record executives, Absolutely. publishers. Um, unfortunately, I had to come back home because of Corona. Um, but yes, I met a lot of amazing people. I did um, African Bank. I was doing a lot of influencer work for them. I performed there as well. Um, I performed in Durban. I performed in Cape Town, which was really great. I got to travel the entire country. And yeah, as soon as things start, because my mom is, yo, my mom is actually wild. She protects me. So she's like, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You have to stay home, um, the second strain is out. So while we're adhering to the protocols, we'll, we'll keep moving. I see you're acting also these days. I, you released a, a skit with in Jamaica. How did that come up, dude? Um, well, we were both going through the same thing on social media, which okay. is Mjola um, Yanyeza. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, he's been my friend for a very long time. 
and we decided to shoot content basically and to show his skill mine and also something that a lot of people are dealing with because best friends <laughs> I don't trust no female best friend. Like, mm. there is no way. <laughs> I don't have none of those. And even if I do, I know their intentions. They want to, to tap and go. They want to ravage these niggas. These niggas are wild. They'll be there, like, waiting for you to break up with your boyfriend. They'll be like, oh, don't call him back. Oh, I've always known that guy's an asshole. Really? Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So before before you spoke about this, we're talking about uh, doing some brand uh, brand ambassador work. Um, a lot of artists feel like uh, corporates do not have much faith in them. Is it the corporates which do not have much faith in them in print brand ambassadors, or the artists are the ones who are not presenting themselves and approaching these uh, corporates for gigs? I think this thing is a cycle because now we are made or left to believe that. You know, for me, in the way that I manage my brand, I don't allow people to tell me in the context of Botswana artists, hey, Botswana artists are like this. No, you speak in the context of Sasa Class because Sasa Class is a complete different entity from any other person in the industry. So I can only speak on myself and say, um, like I said, if you're smart, just like anybody else, like only, <laughs> only the real survive. <laughs> you gotta put that work in and go and knock on doors and use the influence that you have and, or the brand that you have built. I'm talking on social media, not the influence personally, but I'm saying the, the brand that you've built, the numbers that you have, use that to get yourself through the door and go and speak to people about what you can provide for them. Alright, but do you think there's a gap missing there in terms of self-representation as an artist, like on the prof on a professional level? There absolutely is. I feel like a lot of people don't take themselves seriously. Um, they hire managers or personal assistants that don't take them seriously. And um, they focus a lot on like drinking and like, oh, if I'm having a good time, then, you know, my life is set. But like any other job, you need to wake up early in the morning and get to work and graft and make sure you accomplish what you want to accomplish if it doesn't happen that day you wake up tomorrow morning and you try again and i have been broke in my life guys my journey in south africa was not easy as people might think oh you're speaking from a point of privilege i know what it's like to not have anything to eat but still waking up the next morning and say this cannot be my life you need to tell yourself that you started this thing for a reason and you'll continue to push through it because all that work wasn't for nothing. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, so talking of, of artists and re the way they represent themselves, some believe that they just have to be themselves and not represent themselves and, and act when they're in public. They just prefer to keep it raw. Is it something really advisable? Um, it works for different people. Um, for Cardi B, she's out on social media, she goes live and she talks shit and she's herself and like she's not trying to perfect her English or trying to be proper and then we have Beyonce that does no interviews at all and then we have Jay-Z who was a rapper and he sold, he admitted to selling crack and was out there but he changed his life, future, still admits to being in a wild crazy environment and still sells whatever he sells so I think it's more an individual thing. There is no template. Alright, before, before we shut it down um is is mu music can you say music is, is it advisable to advise like young and upcoming artists to, to take music as full-time profession in botswana or they should have something on their side because i've had friends very close friends who decided to to take it professionally but well, like the question it came is with were they really talented in the first <laughs> But I'm joking, you know what the thing is, you reap what you sow, so for me, if I had a child and they wanted to pursue music, I'd first of all ask them if they were willing and ready to take on the responsibility of being an artist. People think that you just wake up and you're a superstar and you're like, 
Woo, I just dance, twerk, twerk, twerk on stage, but it takes a lot of resilience. You have to be able to take all the pressure that comes with it. And um, you also have to be smart and business minded. Wiz Khalifa has been eating off of um, that song on Fast and Furious. And now he's signed other artists and he's recording in studios. But are we looking at him like, where's your music now? No, he was just smart and he pushed what he needed to push. So are you smart? If you're smart, go for it. I talking about your music when yes. I drop in the album the album finally oh my god is coming this year I have so many songs that I can't wait for people to hear and um, all this all these years have been practice for me I did a lot of like hard rap and then I did a lot of mixing of like genres and now I finally know who I am as an artist so I'm really excited about that tell us about the album Whoa, <laughs> First of all, like my lyricism has went from zero to a hundred. I have a lot more knowledge. One, two, I know how to put that knowledge into lyrics. I mean, into melody. And yeah. um, I'm also speaking on issues that I feel very like passionate about. Sometimes it's about being a bad bitch, and then sometimes it's about um, social issues. So you're gonna get a lot of a variety on the album. Right. Yeah. Um, the next question is very personal to me. Some years ago, I had an interview with you. I think that was like six years ago. Uh-huh. You were signed by VIP Mobile, or there was a relationship going on. Absolutely, yes. And they hooked you up with an American producer, Tech 9 And from what I heard, you produced a number of songs, and then next thing, you break up with VIP, which means that content was no longer yours and it couldn't be released or anything. Like, what really happened there? Um, first of all, this guy, the American producer, um, I, had, I hadn't specifically agreed to work with him in the first place. I hadn't even heard any of his music, even when the interview went out. So, <laughs> it, was a, it had a lot to do, and I'm very honest, that's the kind of person that I am. I'm very candid about these experiences. And unfortunately, this was I wasn't someone fucking with you, it. Uh, yeah, but a long time ago. Long time I mean, ago. I have a lot of access now to a lot of people, but it's about my readiness to do it. And also at the time, um, me and Virgin Brew were going through a lot of mm -hmm. um, technical difficulties. With me, when it comes to business, it's never anything personal. I still love Leroy. I still love Kachiso. Um But, you know, business-wise, we were just clashing. Right, right, right. And then... Before, before I came for this interview, I asked some people on the, on the page. Yeah. I asked them a couple of questions that I should ask you. Oh, and there's a whole page. Yeah. No, what, but I'll just ask her. The first one was like, um, the industry is faced with a lot of like, uh, bad en good and bad energy. And drugs are one of the factors that have mm. destroyed a lot of careers. Absolutely. Like, have you ever had any stints with, with any, any form of drugs? during your coming up years, like during your peak now and stuff like that? Absolutely. Um, I used to smoke weed yeah. and it made me extremely paranoid. I'm the kind of person that like, I don't like being out of character because then it like prevents me from being myself. So uh, that was about four or five years ago and I haven't smoked a blunt ever since then. And yeah. I just feel like with anyone, like we're all dealing in Botswana right now. We're dealing with a drug issue. People are on some shit. <laughs> People be on some shit. So yeah, nothing good comes out of doing drugs. All right, and the the second question. This one I love to beat and ask myself: Should I ask? But I was like, anyway, it's the fans that want to know. So this question is 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 in two parts. They say. Um, do you still remember your first kiss and the day you broke your virginity? <laughs> first of all, I'm a virgin. Okay. <laughs> first of all, um, but oh, my first kiss, my first kiss was the most. I you know like I think about I go back and I think about that like that was the worst experience of my life. I never kissed anybody like maybe for two years because this person traumatized me. Like their <laughs> tongue was like right down my throat. So I lied, uh, like <laughs> terrible 
experience. I hated my first kiss. Okay. Uh, are you done responding? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, so you answer the first part first. So yes. The second part first, I mean. Yes. Okay. All right. So in closing, what what are you currently working on before we we, we, we release you? She's actually shooting a music video, so we ejected. Yeah. Um. So I have been signing a couple of artists. Soon you guys. Oh, you have will... a record label now. Um. It's more of an agency. Okay. I'm not a record label, but it's more of like a booking agency. Um. Making sure that artists get endorsed. Um. Artists get their money's worth and um, are also posting the right content like I said it's very important for us to know the business side of things so I'm helping a couple of artists with that and with time you'll understand why social media is so messy the way that it is it's all for a bigger purpose let it trend yeah <laughs> so what, what do you think of this new way of the podcasting culture we called you for a podcast you didn't say you know like we're still young and upcoming what do you think of podcasts? Um, first of all, I appreciate you as a journalist. Um, yeah. You never once attacked me. Um, neither were you biased towards me. You just wanted to know and ask about facts, which I truly appreciated, which is why I agreed to this. But I feel like the podcast, um, the podcast wave right now is absolutely amazing. So other establishments can start picking up their socks. <laughs> and realize that the content is is extremely important as much as the establishment itself is. I would say with radio stations, I would say with television, you don't have television without the content. So I really do appreciate podcasts for putting out. Yeah. Putting so in closing, who would you like to say I'm sorry to and who would you like to say thank you to? <laughs> Um, I'm really sorry to my fans that have loved and supported me. I tend to give a lot of attention to um, negativity, but I see you, I appreciate you, and the reason why I'm still here and standing is because you guys support me through everything. Every single day when you take pictures on the streets, I love and embrace you. I can't hug you guys anymore and it saddens me, but I really do appreciate you. And um, I especially want to say thank you to my mom who has taught me grace, um, independence, and most importantly, um, the love for people. So I most importantly want to thank her and God. So thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Mama Mwa, Do Mrs. Hip Hop. Like I said, it's a classified podcast interview. Check us next week with a brand new episode. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to our website, share, 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 share. Go on iTunes, click there, listen and share with your friends. And also go on Google Podcast. Do the same. It's a wrap.